Yeah, I mean, I have one of the post-game smoothies that the players drink because, like, I'm so stressed out. I feel like I just <laughs> play the game. And, and it's just the, so much respect for this league. This league is so darn good, man. I mean, everyone's good. You know, you never feel like a lead is safe. A um, ton of respect for their players at Washington State and Cami. Um, and we knew, you know, I thought we did a great job out of the gates and really asserted ourselves, especially coming off a tough loss at Colorado. Um, you know, we knew they were going to come back. Um, we did a lot of really good things tonight. I thought we dominated the boards. Um, we were terrific in transition, especially in that first half. Um, and, you know, we made it a little closer than we would have liked, um, but a lot of respect for the other team. And we know that there's some things we can probably manage better down the stretch, and that includes, you know, me too, and we'll get better from it. But it's always nice to get better after a win, especially in this league. And, um, you know, proud of these two. They're incredible shot makers and just players, you know. Um, both had high assists, you know, good assists, low turnovers, and, um, you know, we're, we're continuing to get better, but um, I, I appreciate how our team shows up and tries to buy into the message every single time. Uh, so uh, they combined for 51 uh, today. Uh, how does that, uh, you know, how does that kind of offense, uh, you know, translate to, you know, getting other people going and, yep. you know, things like that? I mean, it's high powered offense, right? Like we got a lot of easy baskets in that first half that when I say easy, they're not easy for anyone except Duchin, right? Or Kenzie a walk in three on the first possession of the game or whatever it is. And ultimately we know that we're gonna be at our best when we're, this 70 goes to 85 and there's, you know, 15 more points on the board, whether it's a couple more shots from each of them or spread out, um, getting that inside outside game um, going. But I think that the, the pressure they put on defense is kind of allows other people to find their rhythm and find their spots. And, um, you know, we know we can we can get even more production across the board, um, and we will, but uh, <coughs> you know, everyone's trying to buy in, you know, buy into their role. Like it's a night, we know Kayla Padilla can score, but she had five assists and zero turnover and had our highest plus minus, right? So we get, we just know that we have a lot of weapons and we're gonna continue to try and get better and, and make sure that, that we're a well-oiled machine on offense. Okay. Uh, Juju, I think. You know, 29 for you tonight, but another game where you're kind of looking down at the box score and it seems like kind of unhappy with the efficiency maybe overall. I mean, overall in kind of the Pac-12, still been scoring a lot, still had a lot of that overall impact, but just the efficiency down a little bit. You know, what do you yeah. think is kind of the, the, the key to upping that for you? Is it more, you know, is it fatigue? Is it just, you know, yeah, shot making? Yeah, what do you I think? think? Just, um, try to make the right plays and be more careful in my shot selection, I think that's what I need to start doing a little more. Um, but I'm just happy we won, honestly, and I'm grateful that, um, yeah, we, we, we did well in the first half, and we had one of our best first halves of, uh, of this whole season, and uh, just making sure that we're taking this and really um, applying things that uh, we can improve on in practice and stuff like that. For any of you, I mean, you had your first, I think, real taste of adversity on the court in that round trip, and I'm just curious what, what the vibe was like in practice this week in terms of moving beyond that, and like you said, you had probably your best first half of the season, how did that all sort of come together? Um, I think I think the message was just like, turn the page, but like, we have to, if we did not leave the mountains with what we learned from those losses, then, you know, it's a wasted trip, so I think all week in practice, we were going hard, it was super competitive um, and locked in, but also, you know, we're not, we can't get so bogged down by two losses after a tough three game stretch when we've only played five Pac-12 games, you know? So I think just keeping our keeping ourselves even keeled, even though we know we had to come into this weekend hungry to get two wins and kind of get ourselves back on that other side of the win column. What were those lessons from the mountains? Um, I mean, I would say, <laughs> you know what? yeah, I mean, we had the toughest three game stretch that anyone's going to have, you know, with UCLA and at Utah and at Colorado. I mean, my, my message too was, you know, we had a real opportunity to go two and one. I, I didn't, I didn't believe we had the right to be super heartbroken over Utah because we did not compete the way that we want to compete. And credit to them, they're really good. So that was the first thing. Like we got on them after Utah about competing. And then I thought we'd come into Colorado and we really competed. Um, we weren't perfect. We made mistakes, but I think the lesson is, you know, Colorado, who was a, you know, projected number one seed and, and really, really good, um, and we're right there. So decide, decide, do we want to be normal? Decide, do we want to be ordinary and kind of, <coughs> we're almost there, or decide if we want to take another step 
But in this league, you can't take any steps unless you take care of the next game in front of you, especially when you're at home. So I think that was the messaging, like, own those, like, feelings, but what are we going to do with them? Lindsay, you just mentioned, especially when you're at home, as you continue to build this program, how important is it to protect home court and give the fans that are coming more and more, like, a show that they want to keep yeah. coming back for? Yeah, I mean, I think we feel a huge responsibility that, um, you know, this is still a growing thing and there's people that are loyal who have been here and there's people that are coming to their first, you know, time ever watching women's basketball. I mean, uh, Cammie said to me before the game, just, you know, coaches who haven't been here for years and have never seen it like this, she's like, look at this, like, look at what you guys are doing. And, you know, so it's never lost on us, but it's also a huge responsibility. Uh, so, you know, of course, go back, go back to efficiency. I mean, I don't want to kind of, you know, make it, uh, make it super bad, but, uh, you know, Juju shot three for 24 from three and the last four games. Uh, what does that kind of mean for the offense? And, uh, you know, when she's, you know, shooting a lot from behind the arc and, yeah. you know, not, it's not going so, down. I'm going to answer this one. <laughs> and look, she knows a lot comes with who she is. Um, but to answer your question, Luca, oh, the efficiency, we are playing Pac-12 teams who are some of the best defensive teams in the league. This isn't a league where everyone's in the 90s, you know, and every single game plan is about how do we stop this kid? And yet we still feel like when she misses, we're surprised, <laughs> right? So, um, I, I mean, we don't, she doesn't take anything lightly on herself. I, I don't, we don't ease it anyway. Like, of course, like we, I believe every game, you know, she could go 18 for 20 or what have you. Uh, but with the amount of responsibility she has for our team, I want her to feel like I can miss and figure it out. I can make the next right play. I say the same thing to Kenzie and our other players. The right play might be four passes in a row. It might be ten shots in a row. Make the next right play. And there's not one ounce of me that wants to change or stifle anything that she's capable of doing. And if she's three for 24 from three, I think she's probably going to go ten for her next 12. That's what I believe. Well, we're always going to watch film and say, was this the right play? Was that the right play? Can I get to the rim? But to me, I'm watching going, she absolutely dissected them in the first half, getting to the rim, confidence in that three, the pull up, you know, and as, as the game develops, like, of course, like efficiency is important, but I mean, she's dominating the game on the other end of the floor too, with a couple blocks and things like that. So um, I think maybe your guys are a little more worried than we are, but we are going to still see room, obviously, to get, to get better there because defenses have to decide what are you going to do, right? Are you going to load up on her? Are you going to go elsewhere and we'll, we'll continue to get better and figure that out. Okay. Mackenzie, it seems like uh, just your, your confidence is kind of growing, you know, especially when Juju's off the floor to kind of be that primary creator. And, and when she is, you know, just when defenders go under screens, they kind of feel confident in your jumper. Just what, what has been the evolution so far this year of just kind of stepping more into this role as, as, a, as, a, as a primary creator? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it just kind of happened naturally. Um, I think it has a lot to do with the trust coach he has in me um, and my teammates finding me. Um, you know, the shots that we shoot out there, those are the shots that we shoot in practice. Um, those are the shots I take with Coach Chris every day before practice in the morning. So um, I think confidence comes from preparation, um, and, I, and I feel like we're super prepared. Um, so when I'm when I'm in the game, I'm, I'm confident. That I have no reason not to be. Um, and I think kind of just touching on that efficiency, you know, last weekend I was 2 for 11, and two for 13, I'm, I still am going to be expected to shoot those shots. Um, and, and our confidence never wavers in ourselves or each other. So, and yeah. If I can ask too, just the, what was your reaction to the fourth quarter, uh, Juju's move that, you know, the, the crossover? I, mean, I saw it too. <laughs> I said, what, the moment she like went back that way and the girl like kind of like chested up and stopped her, I said, yeah, she, she's the one, that one's going down. <laughs> Nolan, as a CG Sports, Lindsay, the first half, I would say to me, was probably the most electric of the season, definitely up there, at least I think most people would agree. The second half, obviously, was a different story. What happened there? They're really good. Um, I mean, this is a quad one team. This is an NCAA tournament team. You know, they beat Maryland, that conference on three three game, you know, winning streak coming in, and they're the reigning Pac-12 champions. Um, so they're, we knew they were going to adjust and come back after us. We they're they're very surgical on offense. So we did some aggressive things. I knew they were going to like try to pick us apart a little bit more. Um, and, and quite honestly, I think we're still learning and growing that when they're attacking us, like I do think we could have, you know, managed some possessions better um, when it's not us ripping it off the the rim and doing a you know a, a, an easy kind of um, attack sort of 
presence in transition. <coughs> what else do we have? Um, so there were some things I thought, and then and then we just some shots just didn't go down. So it was a combination of all of those things. But um, you know, credit to them. Um, I think they went to where their advantages were. Um, uh, you know, Ledger Walker, like I look at her box score and it's not very good. And I'm like, I think everyone in America would want that kid on her team, right? Like she's, um, she's, she makes them go in so many ways, but I thought, um, they did some nice things on their end. We tried to limit the three point line in the second half. We give them a few more twos because of that. Uh, and I just thought we, we, you know, we weren't able to get our offense going as fluidly, um, in that second half. And that probably, um, you know, that probably turned the field of the game a little bit. Juju, are you a soccer fan? We saw you live out the Ronaldo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what is she? I do love Ronaldo. <laughs> I, you saw that Kings? No. I was like, oh. oh. Yeah, I don't know about Ronaldo, so I didn't know. I don't even know why she did that. I was like, she killed herself. <laughs> yeah, I like soccer. Yeah, he's one of the goats. That's, that's what I was going to ask, actually. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's the last one? Yeah, uh, Lindsay, just, just in general, it seems like you know, you've taken to kind of staggering Juju and Mackenzie's minutes a little bit, you know, when, when one's off the floor to, to, to have a little bit more of that, that juice. You know, what at what point in the year did you kind of realize that that, that that was going to be helpful to the offense? And just what do you feel about just, you know, staggering? Yeah. I mean, quite honestly, like, as I can tell these guys, like, there's no one who's, like, thinking about what we're doing more than I am and how we can be better. I, I actually think we can get more out of – um, our bench, that's on me. Um, I think we can get more out of, you know, our, our offense in a lot of different ways, but I think it's pretty clear, um, and it's been for, for quite some time, that um, just both of them, that these two as a scoring threat and just a presence with the ball, it, it would be, it's hard to have both of them off, off the floor uh, because of what they bring. I mean, Kenzie organizes us quite a bit. Um, you know, she can play, you know, she starts at the floor and goes to the point, um, you know, and obviously, um, you know, like it's hard to have Juju off the floor because of everything that she brings, not just putting the ball in the basket, but, you know, the dynamic kind of, you know, defensive plays and the attention she draws and other, other things. So we have confidence in everybody, but I, I have tried to say, okay, you know, if one's coming out, the other one's, and we, you stagger those subs a little bit, but I'm still toying with things. And we went small a little bit and got some really good minutes from Caitlin Davis, um, who, you know, we played a small <coughs> ball, had her at the five. She can obviously go at the four. We're still evolving and, um, you know, hopefully you'll see us continue to, to get better with, with those rotations and things as well.